James. Just to give you a little bit of background, this is from the Washington Times last August. Texas Democrats asked non-citizens to register to vote, send applications with citizenship box pre-check. Did anyone happen to see that? The Democrats, literally, the party itself is sending out this trying to get Democrats registered to vote. So you would think, and this came out last August before the session. I want you all to keep that in mind, okay? So is there anyone in here that's not concerned about non-citizens voting in our election? Okay. Um, you're, you're not concerned about it, my career. That should be funny. Okay. So anyway, next. Um, all right. So this is how I characterize this session. And I think Joanne will probably back me up on this. She follows the session better on most anyone. But um, it was a complete disaster, in my opinion. Um, next slide. Or do I have it? Thank you. Yeah, right. Click. Yeah. So just to give you a little, a little background, that most of y'all probably know this, but in case you don't, when a bill is filed, it's read on the floor the first time, and once it's read, the chair actually assigns it to a committee, okay? It goes to the committee, and then it's in the hands of the chair of that committee. And then that chair can actually uh, agree to bring it up at a public hearing, and then there's, and if they like it, they vote for it. If they don't like it, they vote against it. And then if it's voted for, then it actually goes to the floor of the house for a vote, okay? Um, that's just, that's a, a brief summary of what happens. And so, you know, I was feeling pretty good about this session, about some of these bills, because um, not only did the Republicans control the governorship and the House and the Senate, um, look at this committee. Um, we've got four Democrats on there, but we've got five Republicans. And Stephanie Click, the Republican, a Republican, um, is the chair of that committee. Dustin Burroughs, does that name ring a bell? He was the, I think he's like the vice chair. Um, but the thing that was most encouraging to me is that the three other names, Mace Milton, Valerie Swanson, and Briscoe Payne, are all members of the Texas Freedom Caucus, which I don't know if they still exist or not. I mean, in, in name only, Freedom Caucus in name only. I'm extremely disappointed to them. I think Joanne might touch on that. But anyway, at the time, I was really encouraged. We've got three Freedom Caucus people on here. Surely they're going to be all over this, right? All right, so let me just go through a few bills. House Bill 378, authored by Mike Lane, a member of the Freedom Caucus out of Granbury, um, and Cole Hefner from East Texas over closer to Joanne. Um, all three of them uh, good conservatives, two of them members of the Freedom Caucus. Okay, and basically House Bill 378 simply required the Secretary of State to verify the citizenship of registered voters not registered by the Department of Public Safety. Now I want to show of hands, should, is this a bill that most Republicans should support? Is there anyone in this room that wouldn't support this? Okay, so you would think when we control the Texas House, this should be a no-brainer. Okay, so it was read the first time in the House floor, uh, February 19th, and it was referred to the Elections Committee, chaired by Republican Stephanie Click. Never got a hearing. Never brought up at all. Okay, well, scratch that bill, never saw the light of day. Okay. My wife is always pointing out that I get a little too angry and passionate, so I should be smiling about this, right? Y'all are smiling, I think. Um, all right, let's talk about House Bill 4331 by Matt Schaefer. This one would require voter registrars to compare voter applications with the Secretary of State and Department of Public Safety Records for citizenships. It would also require registrars to send notice to a voter when the registrar is notified that the voter may not be a citizen. Anyone in here? How does that bill sound to y'all? Pretty simple. Kind of like, you know, Illegal aliens or people that aren't here legally should not be voting. Read it the first time, March 25th, referred to the Elections Committee under Stephanie Click. Never got a hearing by Stephanie Click. House Bill 3433, authored by Scott Sanford, super nice guy, one of the strongest Christians I know down in Austin. Uh, not a member of the Freedom Caucus, but probably only because he has the, uh, the prayer caucus. But a good man. Um, in his bill, would have had required that legal residents and legal aliens have a no notation on their ID saying it cannot be used for voting purposes. As you all know, that under DACA, there are um, some of these, uh, uh, the children who come here got the DACA amnesty because of that. They've been legalized, and it's my understanding they probably can even get a driver's license here in Texas, but they're not supposed to be able to vote. Um, and so anyway, this basically shows that when they come in to vote, there's going to be a little thing on there going, when you show the voter ID that, you know, you're not a citizen. Um, sounds like a pretty reasonable bill to me. Read the first time on March 18th, referred to um, Stephanie Click's election committee, 
never received a hearing by Chairman Clay. House Bill 2898. Now, this was a bill offered by Democrat Art Fierro. It would expand the use of curbside voting to include all parents and guardians with children. Right now, the law is that if you're handicapped and you come up and you can't, you have some, need some trouble, Marvin, who's a, a veteran election judge, knows how this goes about. You literally, they will bring the voting, the voting device out to your car so that you can vote. And so, basically, they said, well, you know, there's parents that have children, and that's very cumbersome for them to know to vote if they got children, so maybe we should include that for them so that, you know, that we basically, if you're anyone watching, having legal guardianship or the, the, the parent of uh, any children, which now we've got, we're talking about millions of people here in Texas, they can pull up and say, I don't, I'm too lazy to go in and vote, so I'm going to actually have this happen. The, most of the people that are critics of this bill said this would cause enormous chaos voting centers because you, you see people using them left and right. Um, but anyway, what do you think happened? Passed. Well, it passed out of uh, Chair Clicks and Dustin Burroughs. Well, by the way, Chairman Clicks and uh, our good friend Dustin Burroughs, the ethical um, uh, man that would love it, um, actually voted with all the Democrats. And then it went because it got out of committee. It was passed by the House 90 to 52. Fortunately, the more conservative Senate killed it. House Bill 3682, authored by another member of the Freedom Caucus, would have increased penalties for election fraud from Class A misdemeanor to a state felony. Yeah. Y'all support that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think happened to that? <laughs> Filed on March 7th, March 19th, read right the first time the House floor referred to the Clicks Elections Committee, never received a hearing. But y'all have heard that we had a great conservative session, right? Yep. Okay. And the rumors of a purple session are just bogus. Okay. Um, Senate Bill 901 authored this, this, all the ones I told you now took place in the House. This is, uh, was initiated in the Senate by Brian Hughes, would have increased the criminal penalty for voter fraud from Class A misdemeanor to a state felony, very similar to the one you saw in the House, would have separated the mail-in ballots from in-person early voting ballots, would have cleared up the two or more signature language. Um, this, you know, this was a more extensive bill than the one you saw from the House. Um, potentially, you know, more people be against it. What happened to that bill? Oh, well. I think maybe, maybe that's the one that somehow the, well, anyway. Uh, it passed the Senate and died in the House. Um, okay. House Senate Bill 1569, authored by our own Senator Pat Fallon, would have curbed the usage of school funds for political advertising, extended restrictions to individual members of school boards as well as employees and contractors, would have limited taxpayer funded communications, including social media and emails. How many would have support that bill? Yeah, I would have too. So what happened to it? It was substituted in committee and amended on the full floor of Senate, passed, passed the Senate, passed the Senate, received by the House, read the first time April 26, referred to the Second Clicks Elections Committee, given a hearing, but left pending the committee where it died. Okay, Senate Bill 9. Um, this was the big one. This was what a lot of people were watching, including myself. I have 25 seconds, so I'm probably not going to have time to get into that. Um, but this is one that was probably one of the most frustrating. A really good bill uh, put to forth from Senate, uh, in the, on the Senate side, but went to the House. Longer story, don't have time, but it basically died in the Senate Clicks Committee. Um, tragic. This is what everybody was watching, but, and I was aware of this, but these other bills, I had no idea that, that this happened. And I wanted you all to know. That's why I'm showing you.